Hello and welcome to another Zach Carnage video and this time we're going to be doing a very special video testing out the microphone which I received as a Christmas present this past Christmas so Merry Christmas to everyone out there and have a very happy new year which is just upcoming and this time we're going to be taking a look at the Bujin deck which I don't think I have yet done a deck profile for mainly because uh, I never got around to buying a Harume um, and honestly I uh, I don't mind the fact that I didn't spend loads of money on Harumes, especially seeing as they're going down in price so much. Um, I'll probably just end up picking up a couple whenever I, I get the opportunity. So this is just going to be a quick deck profile of how the deck is without uh, Harumes for the upcoming January format. Um, keep in mind the extra deck is sort of pieced together from uh, the extra decks of all the other decks which I have. So... Um, yeah, that's why they're going to be in different sleeves. So let's go on with the main deck, and uh, we'll just go through everything that we have. So we start off with three copies of Bujin Yamato, the absolute staple. Um, this guy does... he's just the main card in your deck. You know, he's irreplaceable, and it's a great thing that he's been kept at three, because um, you, need, you need to have three copies. Then we play two copies of Mikazuchi. Um, the second is for that added protection, I, like, one is a staple, second is personal choice. Um, it's just really good when you have both of these on board. Uh, one Arasuda, because uh, I was able to pick it up early on, and it can be pretty good depending on what you use it with. Um, I like to use it with Quillen whenever I get the opportunity. So that's it for the, the main Beast Warriors. And of course we play the Triple Crane. Um, you just have to play all of the, all of the hand traps that you can in this deck. Uh, double hair and turtle for protection. Um, pretty standard stuff. Then we play one Quillen and one Centipede. Uh, these are optional. I mean, um, Quillen is very useful against Clifforts uh, for getting rid of that. Um, the the one Scout whenever you get the opportunity. Um, sometimes actually um, you'll find that it's more useful to get rid of the the Pendulum Scale one or. Um, yeah, the Pendulum Scale 1, if they don't play Tramplings. Just because they'll, they'll use the Sacrifice to search uh, for a Scout, and then they won't have anything left to go for. But it really depends on how many um, options they have left, because you don't want them to end up with a Scout and just search for the one again. So, uh, Quillen, just be careful about what you use that for. And Centipede, you know, it's pretty obvious. So just get rid of the Spell and Trap. Um, and that's it for all of the Bujin cards. Uh, Bujin Monsters. And then we tech Thunder King Ryo, uh, which is still a brilliant card, you know, you can negate all the Pendulum Summons as well, it's brilliant. Um, and Brotherhood of the Firefist Bear for just taking out monsters which you otherwise wouldn't be able to run over. And we play two copies of Honest because now the deck plays um, the, the five hand traps for your Yamato, which is just absolutely brilliant. That's it for the monster lineup. Spell lineup uh, is pretty straightforward. We've got triple tanky. Um, searching any of your beast warriors that you want. Um, you can go into a bear if you want to and get another one. Uh, two, boonge incarnation. Um, three can be a little bit cloggy. You don't necessarily want to draw the third. Uh, playing double MST because you have you have to play MST now at least at two, if not at three. Then uh, we have double Kaiser Coliseum. This. Um, it's still a really good card. I mean, Vanity's Emptiness is obviously better, but Vanity's Emptiness costs uh, about six times as much. So, this is still really good, especially against uh, Cliff Orts, Burning Abyss, stuff like that, where they can only just, they just get stuck on one monster and they can't really do anything about it. So, I, I, I think Bujin's just gone out a bit for, um, because it's become cheap and the top people aren't playing it so much. It's not as fast as uh, some of the other decks, but it does have a lot of control ability. And for the one-offs, we play one Book of Moon, a Dark Hole, a Foolish Burial, and now the brand new, back from, um, back from the death, the Snatch Steel. Uh, brilliant card in any deck. Uh, just, just play it. That's it for the spell lineup. And onto the traps. Uh, all one-offs here. We've got a Breakthrough Skill, a Regalia the Sword, one Skill Prisoner, one Torrential Tribute, one Pulse, one Bottomless Trap Hole, one Dimensional Prison, and honestly, my favourite card in the deck, Horn of the Phantom Beast. Um, still amazing with Susanoo when you um, 
just attack every single monster, draw every single time, you really build a lot of advantage with this card. So that was it for the 40 card main deck. Then onto the mix match extra deck, we have two copies of Susanowo, or Susanowo, um, just your, your go-to Xyz monster. We have one Sukuyomi, uh, one Tiger King, one Ragnar Zero, one Paladynamo for just getting around pretty much everything you want to Paladynamo does. Uh, Constellar Omega for when you, you don't really know what you want to go into, but you know you want to make a rank 4. It's just always good. Um, on 101, on the Valval Chain. Heartland Draco is really good with uh, Tenki, just because it, it can't be stopped. Steel Swarm Roach is good again. Um, pendulums. Crazy Box. Rhapsody and Berserk to make your Susanoo unbeatable by a lot of decks. Uh, one Black Ship of Corn. And one Diamond Direwolf for those problem situations. So that's it for the. Uh, Bujin deck profile, if you've got any comments or uh, suggestions that you want to make, don't forget you can always leave those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and uh, have a wonderful new year.